until after 1 p.m. Um, got the minutes from our <coughs> initial meeting. Um, chance to review them. Anybody have a chance to review them and have any comments? Randy, would you like to give us a quick overview? Yeah, so just as a, a quick overview for those who weren't at the last meeting, uh, I presented a, a presentation that outlined kind of where we were at, uh, why we were here you know, based on the fire. Uh, we had some decent initial conversation around that. I shared some initial uh, financial implications, uh, talking about what the insurance would cover, what the insurance would cover as far as potential rebuild, and the three options that we were looking at. One was to simply rebuild the damaged part of the building. Uh, option B was to knock down the building and, and reconstruct new, but uh, staying with the same square footage, not necessarily the same footprint, but the same square footage. And option three was to, to expand and truly look at the vision of the, of the school and the program and, and to rebuild it bigger. Uh, structure that would house uh, maybe an expansion of the horticulture program, or that we look at uh, campus wide, we move some other shops down into uh, that particular building. Uh, that was sort of option three. Uh, again, I can sort of share some of the monetary donations that we received. Uh, we had a lot of good input. I think uh, those that were in the audience, some initial thoughts. And uh, we walked away from that meeting, uh, planning today's meeting, uh, which I'll be turning over to Tim momentarily to introduce uh, our presenters today. Uh, but the concept was uh, we, def we definitely need a concept. Uh, what does uh, tomorrow look like? Uh, so Tim is going to go out and, and hopefully secure the services of an architecture firm to provide some of that initial work for us so we can make some decisions as a subcommittee, obviously knowing that the, the full board has to have final approval. So uh, that was, in a nutshell, what we talked about last week. But what I'd like to do is, Tim, if you don't mind, actually, before I turn off to you, Tim, the, introduce um, the firm. I just want to give everybody an update on the donations. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, we did receive uh, permission from the State House uh, through the Skills Capital Grant Program. Uh, because we have an active Skills Capital Grant contract out there, uh, as reminded us for our automotive program, uh, the state actually uh, made an amendment to that particular contract. They increased it by 15,000 some change. Uh, and that allowed us to go out and buy a new zero-turn lawnmower. Uh, the zero-turn lawnmower was what caused the fire. We lost that particular zero-turn in the fire. So uh, we were able to secure a new zero-turn lawnmower before the end of the school year. So uh, that was one additional change. Uh, we've received countless uh, donations when it comes to small hand tools. Um, and as far as monetary donations, this is uh, checks from individuals, companies, uh, and we also have an online donation process now through PayPal. As of today, the last time I checked, we received $23,085.37 in monetary donations. So uh, again, a great start. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Tim if you want to talk about the work. If you want to just update us on the insurance, if there's an update on the insurance process, and then second of all, the introduction to today's presentation. Yeah, the insurance companies and their lawyers are still fighting it out on who's money or can get money from home. So we're in hold on demoing, but I'm on hold also because I had some asbestos samples taken, or samples taken from asbestos in the building before we could demo it anyway. So for the time being, we're still on hold on demoing. And so I sent out, I think, six uh, RFQs to different architectural firms, had two written responses and a callback. And I'm following out, not wanting to do it. Um, and we went, over, we went with Deetson Company. Um, both companies were very good. Um, they have worked in uh, educational projects before, um, but our, their time frame seemed to be quicker than the other companies. So that kind of thing, our urgency to get this. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Kevin and introduce yourself and make your proposal or go run through the Okay. Uh, yeah, so my, my name is Trevor Reardon with the Eastern Company Architects. Um, I don't know, can we like get everybody to kind of introduce themselves? That would be great. So I'm Andy Lincoln, over the superintendent. Richard, <coughs> excuse me, Richard Aquadro, Board of Trustees. I'm Mike O'Keefe, okay, I'm Chairman of the Board of Trustees. I'm Tim Smith, Solutions Manager. So, 
you know, we have some administrators and some staffing values to do it for. Sure, go Bianca, the school principal. Melanie Chartier, I'm the vocation director. Mark Nevin, I'm the horticulture department head and instructor. Mark Nevin, ABA. Okay, so I put together a little agenda here we can quickly go through. Um, um, this is Shelby Parrish from our, from our office also to help me put the proposal together and uh, it's excited to help me uh, put this project together. I'm very excited about this. I live in town here. Um, I went to Northampton High. Uh, graduated in 1983, and uh, it was always kind of a rivalry between Smith, Polk, and Northampton High, but I really see the, the value of vocational programs nowadays, so I'm real excited to work with your school. So, um, I know Tim mentioned uh, doing something with the PO for the designer contract. Um, just wanted to mention that uh, as we're going forward. Um, as far as like the um, the approach that you're taking to kind of finance this this project, it may it may affect the way we go about the design. Um, I don't I know MSBA. I don't see anything in there it's like program where they like fund um, vocational schools, and I may not just know that part of it. Right. So they, they do finance vocational schools through the, the traditional route. So for us, because of our unique governance, we have, we'd have to work through the city of Northampton to sign off on uh, the current financial structure that we're trying to deal with right now. One is the insurance piece. Uh, so we're insured, the structure is insured up to 1.5 million. I know that's not even close to what we're looking at for potential scope. Uh, we're also insured with all the lost equipment up to 230,000, I think that, about 230. So our hope with the, the equipment loss is that we're trying to regain and get new equipment through donations or whatnot to save some of that insurance money that we can apply towards the, the building rebuild. Yep. On top of that, <clears throat> working with the state, there's two grants that we're working on right now. Currently, one that we're working on, I was with Joe and Melanie today, uh, this is the Skills Capital Grant. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Skills Capital Grant from the Governor's Office. Uh, it's a way that the state has been trying to finance the renovations of Chapter 74 shops over the last several years. Uh, we've received se several of these over the last few years. This particular one uh, is sort of a dual purpose. One is to uh, improve the equipment in front of our students, but also a facility to upgrade. So this is a two-year grant that we're ready for. 30% uh, of the grant will be applied to renovations to the facility. Uh, so we're writing this grant for horticulture and animal science. So in the hopes of receiving this grant, we can apply 30% of that grant towards the, this particular building. Uh, approximately what 300,000 or so. I'm looking at Joe and Melanie. About 300,000. We're hoping for, for renovation costs. Not all of that would be applied to this particular building, though, because we have renovation issues that we have in our animal science buildings as well. But that's one grant we're looking at. In addition to that, there's a larger skills capital grant coming out in the fall, uh, upwards of five million dollars per awardee, uh, and that one is just the opposite. Seventy percent of the uh, grant can be applied towards facility upgrades. So, am I speaking correctly, Melanie, Joe? Okay. I'll make sure I'm using accurate numbers there. Uh, so that's the one that we're really gearing up for and, and, and hoping that we'll get. Uh, so between the insurance and, and through these two particular grants, we're probably looking at four to five million, most likely on the conservative side that we could apply towards uh, the facility. On top of that, uh, our state senator has put in a, uh, an economic bond bill uh, for, this, for the school, I think about a million dollars, I think uh, she put it in for. So again, we're looking somewhere in that five to maybe six million dollar range, potentially. And that's not even touching MSBA. I think we all understand MSBA is a, a bigger issue to deal with. Uh, so that's where we're at currently on uh, June 5th. Yeah, excellent. Okay, yeah. I didn't realize that you that there was a way to go through MSBA, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you were planning on going that way. Uh, you know, it tends to take 
a lot more time, a lot more cost, you know, to, uh, to use that program. But you know, sometimes it's the only pathway there is. Yeah. All right. Um, next item here is uh, process. Uh, I guess drawings. Maybe just going through the, you know, what are what are you looking for as far as you know? We put in a kind of a proposal for a certain amount of services. You know, basically, it's a developing uh, floor plan, site plan, um, uh, elevations, what the building would look like, and also some, uh, you know, some write up about you know what type of systems would be in the building for mechanical, electrical, you know, any kind of um, any kind of system that. Uh, it's not the architectural in nature. So, but this whole process is like not knowing what this, what we're going to fund it, right? So, we came together as a group and decided on this plot of land, we want to put this building with so many classrooms, whatever, right? And have a plan and a cost estimate, and then Andy can go to Boston and say, this is what we're looking for. And hopefully they say, okay, here's your, here's your 50 million. <laughs> or then how do you scale it back if, if they say no? Does that sound right? Yeah, I, I think our wish list would be that, that third option I mentioned during the last meeting, which was if we had the opportunity to build a building that we truly want for the next 40 or 50 years, I service not only horticulture, but potentially some other programs as well, what would that look like? And I think that's what I'm initially seeing the potential. The other option, which me, honestly, I'm a realist, and you know, I was telling my team earlier today, every night's sleep I have, I am having less hope that option three is a the reality. Uh, so it, with every night's sleep, I'm thinking option two might be our only reality, which is to simply, hopefully get a new building, but at the same square footage, uh, not to expand. Uh, so I think, to speak for me, I would love to see looking at James and Mark and the app and Tim, what would our ultimate wish list be? If we truly did have the opportunity, if the state house said, yes, here's your 50 million, what would this building look like? Um, I would love to have MSBA. Again, it's a long-term project if we went down the MSBA bureau, uh, and it's also politically trying to get the city on board for that. I also do know, to be totally transparent, we have other facility issues on campus. And I need to be very cautious how far we go down the route of spending every penny on the horticulture building when we also have other facility issues. So it's a very fine line that we're all trying to walk. Uh, so if we don't get that $50 million wish list, which I'd love to see, uh, in reality, what would a new e-building look like within the same square footage? It doesn't have to be the same footprint necessarily. It right. could be anywhere down there. Uh, what would that look like? That would be current, state-of-the-art, and satisfy the educational needs that these two instructors have, and ideally maybe a third instructor at some point as we, as we expand the program. So I'm really looking at big wish, but also reality, a new building that same square footage, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's uh, the world we live in. <laughs> but, you know, it'd be nice to think that, you know, because you've been, you know, you have a history, you cover a lot of area within the state, that you would have some priority. You know? yeah. um, are you planning on building the building on the same exact place on the site? Talking about them, right? Well, that potential another story building next to it that, that could um, incorporate that whole square. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I went back there and kind of walked around a little bit from the person who the part of the you know, and uh, you know, it's on a little bit of a hill. I know you were looking at greenhouses, part of that building. Separated off the back a little bit, or a wing off the back. Right. So there's that one greenhouse that you probably saw that's attached. That one wing. That's been relatively recently renovated. I would say that would not be top priority. Look at James and Mark. I'd say that would not be top priority to take that greenhouse down and rebuild if we can work around that particular greenhouse. 
But again, it's, I'm open to that discussion as well. But I look at you two, honestly, as the, the end users. Question number one, if we were locked into the same square footage, but you can redesign however you want the square footage to look like, what would you two need to have them? I think, um, ideally, we would have three classrooms. Um, you know, if we can keep that greenhouse, that'll save us some costs. If we have to move it, then you know that changes things. Uh, we definitely need uh, a lot of storage space for equipment. Um, you know, the front garage is multi-use between storing equipment as well as um, wintertime use for landscape design and construction uh, to teach the kids. So that space or a little bigger would be ideal. Um, an indoor climbing space, which would be incorporated into an indoor shop space where we're doing stuff. So like, you know, say the head house is a bigger space, um, climbing part along one wall maybe, uh, so we can do stuff in the middle of winter time. Um, but again, we have to put in probably more stuff to deal with the hydroponics, aquaponic uh, produce production, and then as well as a, you know, Jim and I talked about um, the storefront, so to speak. So when, you know, people come part, come in, you have the cash, the cash register, the floral cooler, we have produce there, you know, that would be all be attached to the head house um, and access, easy access to the greenhouse and stuff for the kids. So what, what is in the building right now? Is it we have two classrooms, a head house, which is at the front of the greenhouse, um, front garage, back garage. So the back so the back garage is where we do the equipment maintenance. So we definitely, I mean, square footage wise, we have to keep the same. It would have to be that one bay garage. Um, Two bay would be a little bit bigger, or one and a half bay, a little bit bigger, where we have more room to actually have 12 kids working on equipment, or you know, dealing with chainsaws and stuff for sharpening, cleaning. Uh, so we need that as well. And then we have our storage barn, uh, where we store a lot of the equipment inside, but just attach to the building doesn't have to be here. Great. Right. Not with the, the that building, the kind of the hillside, or Correct. right next to the hill. Yep. So kind of opens up an opportunity for maybe storage below. Well, right, if we had equipment storage below and we could have other storage above or classrooms above or something like that, that's, that's definitely well, use for shelf space above. Like right? I mean, we actually measured the elevation floor of the front of the house to the dirt road, but lower greenhouse in the back is like 13 and elevation change. So that's hopeful for that's a storage. Statewide tour of all the you know, science programs. I want to go back out and check out some more of those. I'm most familiar, I'm most familiar with Bristol and Aggie, uh, their horticulture program. It's mostly greenhouses. Well, theirs is divided out to the different components, right. so it'd be kind of hard to compare. Exactly. I mean, they have they have parts that I like them all. <laughs> Like the greenhouse and Flory is a nice place, and their their um, their new barn for arbor and landscape would be ideal. But I, I know that's a separate <laughs> that that probably not feasible on what we have. Mark, the one in Vermont that we went to, uh, you bet that right? The Brattleboro. Brattleboro. Yeah. Oh. So I like the design of that bay that they have. The garage, and then you have the office up above, right? Is that what you had? Their garage bays, it's a two story garage bay. The wings. The same current is. I was just saying, Jane, you went over this way a couple years ago, 
from Lenny and three is also one. The Brattleboro one is all one floor basically. Right, but it's a two-story garage bay, right? The horticulture does not. Forestry has a high two-story yes. bay. Yep. But the office is there's no real, there's no office there. Okay. There's a second. Could the climb, you know, that's your wish list, but the climbing area could be incorporated into the two-story garage right. bay. If you, if you, had like a, yeah, you had a tall, like, 15-foot ceiling bay, we could easily yeah. incorporate it where we could put so ropes So we could up. have a multi-purpose oh, yeah, space. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't have to be dedicated to that. It's just yeah. I want to be able to access to use so the kids can practice climbing. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been to that one Valley? The uh, educational property? Not yes, they have. They have. Yes. Uh, they have a similar yes. setup where basically it's a metal building, which would be kind of somewhat ideal in cost in cost concerns. Um, but they have a, basically what you're saying is a two-story garage bay. They have a mechanical space kind of built on the second floor on the, on the back side of the shops that has a lower ceiling over like the office and storage areas, a lot, a lot of yep. areas. So it sounds like. That might be something that could work also. I don't know if we, I don't know if you've had you know, thoughts already about you know, kind of what way you want to go with this as far as like, the type of building. Uh, I know you have metal buildings back there already. Uh, it doesn't necessarily. Uh, I mean, it meets it meets the like the look of those buildings, but it doesn't really tie into the brick that you have here on on the campus. And I don't know if that's. Anything that you're you know, with the metal buildings, you will hot um, and still keep them pretty inexpensive, relatively. Uh, excuse me, Richard Aquadro. I'll jump in here. Uh, so, this is the first time seeing this info, Kevin, and this is our first real meeting in a sense. And we're trying to navigate our path on where we're, which way we're headed. Um, so we have these wish list options, obviously. And um, so we need as a team. And if uh, this is still a process, depending upon how we move forward, um, to start figuring all this out, obviously. So, but this conversation, this dialogue is good starting point to get the ball rolling. Tim, you got anything to jump in here with? Um, not really, not like, I guess I'm not sure how you go from, yeah, why don't we, why don't we go through like the, the program and then we can talk about the schedule of, you know, kind of where we saw us being able to kind of meet the timeline. Um, I don't know what your ability to meet is, or if you have somebody that is a kind of a point person for decision making um, that can help us make decisions on a on quicker uh, yeah, pace. So really, we're kind of looking for a conceptual floor plan, right? Yeah. Just to, to go and find the fun. So it doesn't the detail. Not too much detail, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah. want how many That's classrooms, how they're connected, but right enough to the room to the cost estimator. Right. right. And, yeah. And ability to, you know, cost out on fairly, you know, close. Yeah. You know. So, you know, I, I want to, you know, kind of understand the basic, you know, what are, what are the classrooms you're looking for, you know, kind of know how many in the, in the larger, uh, expanded version of this. Are, are you looking for us to also look at the smaller? Um, you know, like option number two. You need it. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is all the beginning, Kevin. That's we don't want to sound like we know what we're doing. We're bringing in the experts. Uh, Rick spent a lot of architectural and building building background. building Mike, more not architectural more, building more <laughs> building background. Uh, so, I mean, this is the first major crisis situation we've had in a long time. So, we are we're looking, I mean, these guys need to start teaching again in the fall. Yeah. Uh, so, we're going to put together some temporary quarters for them. But we want to put together a master plan 
so that, like you said, the end result, some sort of timeline. We're not going to stick anybody to a hard timeline until you tell us exactly what you think is going to be done, and then when you start contracting out, then Tim can put together timelines with with, uh, with with parties that are going to handle that. But right now, we're just trying to, as uh, we are the subcommittee, to report out to the full board to get authorization. So we need your feedback to us as much as you need from these two guys that eat, sleep, and breathe that. Uh, department. So we're willing to give you what you need, but we have not <clears throat> thought about corporate works or any of that at this point. But but should we give Kevin like if if the guys think they need three classrooms with four, so you know, okay, we need those three plus we want to add two more and here's the side here's the square footage of those classrooms. So there there's that much square footage locked up and then you need that many so, so many square footage for that many students for locker room space, and then what if that's a lot of kids, how maybe bigger bathroom down there, and then uh, different uh, shop teacher uh, office space, and then go into you know the, the bigger bays, equipment storage, and you kind of have to make those decisions, and then and then go on, you know, see how that lays out, walk down there, look at the, look at the space, and how does it lay out there. And then you can go in later how to kind of build the material. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to get an idea. Yep. Uh, things you're maybe thinking or have on uh, yeah. So, I mean, if you look at the preliminary schedule, it's kind of laid out in the process that we need to go through. First thing is, you know, kind of develop, developing a program um, for the building. As, you know, it was kind of a little bit described in the RFP that we got, you know, some of the rooms. Uh, it wasn't complete for, you know, a full. You know, facility as far as like meeting code and, um, and all that, but give us kind of a good sense of uh, you know the spaces they were looking for. Um, I kind of guessed a little bit on the classroom sizes. You know, I kind of used the SBA standards as a as a guideline. Um, the shop spaces, you know, the ones that lower Pioneer Valley, one that I have experience working within, are like twenty five hundred square feet, um, and that. Can, I think that includes the office and storage area that we have built into those. So I put 2,000 square feet, and that was, um, yeah, let me get a little bit more. So 2,000 square feet for those, kind of thinking that the office and storage area would be part of it. But I think we'll probably have to refine that a little bit based on you know, what we think the program is going to be. Um, I've seen, I think, uh, Shops that for especially for like Portsmouth, where they're much larger, you know, just they need so much square footage of the store space to be able to do work, have uh, planters or whatever. There's four floor space to put a machine in, and floor space to walk around that and work on it. So, but how much did you put in for the classroom? Did you put a thousand square feet? So if you look at the bottom, it kind of has the MSBA standard. 850 is like the standard high school level of regular classroom. But then if you go to a tech classroom, I'm not sure exactly what you want in these classrooms. That's 1,200, so it's kind of halfway between. I can tell you one of the classrooms needs to be larger. It's probably like 30 students. The other two can be smaller, you know, like 15 students. And the students tend to sit at two person tables, like three by six, as opposed to individual desks on the back of the flex layout, like a square foot. If that helps you, any I think that square foot is talking already bigger than your own. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I think we would go around campus and find out what the garages and spaces and classrooms would meet our needs for 12 kids plus bays. So I think. As far as looking at other campuses that are around the state and how certain things are set up so we can get different ideas and what we're used to, I think that using what we have on campus is also important. Uh, so it's comparable to the other shop programs. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't want to be irritated. The two classrooms that we have, I'm just thinking of the 
the function of your two classrooms are more related, correct? Correct. Which is different than the Agnex shop, which is different than the automotive shop, or the collision shop, or the plumbing shop, or the Cosmo shop. Uh, well, your two classrooms are like the related classrooms. Yeah, the reason I asked like that larger classrooms is due to the agricultural elective. And as each program grows, three programs you teach like license prep, that is at 35 kids. And unless we have more teaching staff, it's going to have to be taught by one person, you know, for the foreseeable future, so we need space. So that's why one class will be the kind of school. And there's other ag lessons like that that take more students than the average class. Really. That may not be anything to do. No, I mean, you know, the way I like to kind of approach these is with, you know, kind of keeping things flexible to a certain degree. So, you know, you have, like, that large classroom, maybe it's divided into two separate classrooms and you don't have that many students. Mm -hmm. And that way, having an extra classroom on campus, uh, like I said, you don't have as many as 35 as a minimum. Yeah. But it's also assuming that the way things have been, the way they'll be. So we need to be careful about that too. We're going to be building a new building. We'll have to look at how things are scheduled and organized. If that's really optimal or not. Excuse me, Joe. I didn't hear the first part of your. The end. I said it was. That we're making an assumption the way things have been done is the way they'll always be done. We're going to look at a building space, we should also be looking about future planning and how that Got space it. is used. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if anybody had any other, you know, opportunity to kind of go through the program space and take a look at it. We're just, you know, we're just taking a first look at this and, you know, we, in order to kind of get to the next part of this, which is kind of development for the land, you know, kind of to have this nailed down to a certain degree. So I want to, you know, be able to like come to a conclusive program as quickly as possible. Um, I can pose so, a question to the two instructors. If we are limited, if, if, if we have a spectrum of square footage, okay, and if we're locked in closer to what we currently have, maybe look at okay. And we have to shift our priorities between your related classroom space versus the shop space. So right now you really have the back bays and you have the front garage. Okay. Well, hypothetically, they could be combined into two spaces. One space is larger, hypothetically. Would you prioritize larger related classroom space and lose some on the storage slash, slash shop space? Or would you want to have a larger shop space and perhaps smaller related space? If you had to choose one or the other, what would you prioritize? I would say a larger shop space, yeah, and it's storage space. Um, just because those are premium now, they turn a lot of stuff. And to be honest, if you're building something new that's designed, then you probably give us a design that works better with the same square footage. Current shop space can be better utilized for the layout. Yeah. And some of the like the ag elective classes, like I do Florian and first aid, I could do that in like the head house if we had we could put chairs out or whatnot. I don't have to teach in a classroom necessarily. So we could kind of shift space wise for a period or something. That space could be two meters. But right now the way it's laid out it's kind of hard. <laughs> well, we also want to guide state of the art. I mean, if we're going to go through this process, we're not going to skimp in regards to some square footage. Now is the time. We've got to do this. And, and I want you to, I know we need to scale it back as far as uh, reality. But you know, you got to, it's your own story when you're negotiating. You ask for the world and you take and scale it back to being accepted. But the thing is, right now, uh, don't skip on it. Give us a, a clear picture of what you really want. And let's, let us go for it. We're going to be the negotiators to go to that to get the money. 
you give us what your wish list is a real wish list. Make it happen because I'm going to fight like hell for anything you guys need. So give it to me. All right? Please. Um, so a couple other questions. Um, the locker rooms that you have. Um, what what are those? I assume that people are changing. You know, from currently the we have two single stall bathrooms, and then the lockers are in the hallways. There is no locker room. They're just and they're not changing out of clothes into other rooms. Oh, okay. I know what they are. Yeah, maybe okay. overcoats or, or heavy coats or boots or something. But yeah. Some do oh, use okay. the bathroom to change, but. Most people come prepared for shopping. Yeah, I didn't know if they were changing to because, uh, it's because it's uh, getting dark. We, need, we don't need that kind of space uh, as far as privacy and change. That's not a requirement. Okay. So, measuring the rec building, I, I don't think you're going to get the classrooms you want. Just a real quick perspective. So, maybe that's something we should think about adding on an animal science classroom in there or two classrooms. I, yeah, I mean, down there on the asking them, asking for the world, yeah. I mean, if we, if we were going to build a building similar to maybe with the, with the layout that needs design, um, two stories of classrooms would be ideal, classroom space. Um, and I was actually saying, James, you know, even though I'm pushing back a little bit, he brings up a good point. There are larger classrooms, but would a, a lecture style classroom make more sense that all the acts can rotate through when they're larger or if it's you know related classroom time where they don't need hands on or other things. That might be a, a, a useful space um, to have available to them that could see more. Um, but you know that might be if, if you're not really getting three programs in there but you're only getting two um, and you're using the same space. That might be an advantage to have a space like that on campus. Yeah, because we currently do run Robins. I mean, I don't need it as a class assigned one person, but I think when we plan, there are class offerings in the larger space compared to a smaller space. And that's just something to plan for because we can. Yeah, so I, I think, you know. Have that kind of lecture style hall, and you're going to gain seats and spare footage as you coming up. You're talking with smart board technology, or other things, with the anatomy classes, or things like that. When you go through the theory of it, that might be a value. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe we can start. Uh, Identifying each of these different classrooms um, and you know getting into a little bit more detail on them. I think your locker room space, you guys can correct me, but for most of them, if the locker room was in between the classroom space and then into the shop area, so that you know they're changing on their way through or spaces like that. I do think though, if there was multiple programs, probably having separate locker rooms makes sense for student management, behavior management. Those kinds of things. So I wouldn't look at it as necessarily just a pass through hallway, which they currently have, but if there was more like an Ag Mech style locker room, uh, which I think was, you know what that is? Is that like 12 by 15, 12 by 18? That yeah, but like 300 square feet, not much. So 300 per, per room. First shop. First shop. Yes, yeah, so if there were two shops, houses, you go in between two bottom rooms, if there were three, it would be the first one. That makes sense. Okay. First thing I understand. Okay. And offices, are the offices typically in the shops and then it's outside the shops or? Maybe in the bottom room. Right, so uh, there, there is this off, well, there's layouts on. Ideally, if they were centrally located to keep an eye on students, somehow that would be helpful. But right now, it, it was in a closet. <laughs> you know, it wasn't good. But 
but modern shops didn't have it where there's like windows so you can see the shop space. Right. Um, that would be ideal or, you know, or a common student space that needs to be monitored. That makes sense. Yes. I don't know if that helps or if that's the well, yeah, I mean, so we have three shops identified right now, so yeah. we could have three offices within those shops. Yeah. Um, but then the other ones would have to be outside of those. Yeah. Then we make clusters of them. Correct. Like the horticulture program, they expand three teachers to all three of us can share the same office space. As long as they have enough room for each of us to have a desk. Um, so it could be a separate area of the building. Where our students would primarily be Okay. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here, Kevin. Uh, on your last page of this big handout, you've got a proposed layout. Yep. This is your first <coughs> staff at what you think we may want to do, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Explain to me these, these uh, have. Uh, Circles here. This is the sun exposure. That yeah, that's we, just the, we put it out there just because we knew there were going to be green houses. Yeah, that's what I was figuring. Um, so what I can't quite read it. Summer is 70 degrees and winter was 23 degrees. So this would be how the sun is shining into that area based on yeah. your research. <laughs> your, um, okay. So um and you came up with this concept based on your experience with other vocational schools yeah i mean we can we can lay this out we're trying to think of a way to like you know we can keep the classroom and the shop spaces together which is kind of a, uh, what i've seen at other vocational schools that kind of have the, the classrooms on one side of the hallway and then the shop spaces that you know, kind of relate to those classrooms on the other side of the hallway um, and they have walkers and kind of along, lined along that space. And that kind of keeps, you know, keeps people in a, in a similar like, location. I assume that, you know, I'm not sure exactly how the campus works, but I assume that the students are kind of going all over the place and then they go back for the, you know, to the specific shops for those particular classes. So we, yeah, go ahead. So we, we alternate by week. So. Our freshmen and juniors are always together, and our sophomores and seniors are always together. So if I'm a freshman or a junior during my shop week, I'm with these two instructors basically all day, every day for that week. Um, while the other two grades are roaming the building because they're going to the math class, they're in English class, and science class, they're doing that every, like a normal traditional high school. Following week, they teach them. So if I'm in shop, I'm in shop all day, every day for that week. If that makes sense. That does completely. Thank you. I just want to make sure. Uh, I know so, we, so all the people in this building would just be there yes, all, all day, day yeah. for the whole week there. Yeah. A few exceptions, but we don't need to get to the fine details. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that I know we interchange a lot of the vocabulary. We know what we're talking about. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page when talking about shops. And okay, so one conversation we had a few minutes ago <coughs> was about animal science. Totally different conversation, but we have another building down there. It used to be the former Park and Rec building, GCC yeah. building. We're going to try to renovate that, force our animal science classroom space. That's what Tim was referring to a few minutes ago. But Tim said we may, not, we may not have enough space down there for all the classrooms that they're holding for us. We may have to build in more classroom space to this particular project that we're talking about. So I just want to make sure when we say three shops, are we talking? Three shop spaces. Or are we talking about three chapter seventy four programs? I just want to make sure we're all attacking the same language. So when you say three shops, what were you referring to when you say three shops? Are you asking me? I'm thinking three programs. You know, because you have shops set up to be, you know, to accommodate these programs specifically. Is it possible to make them multi program? I think that's worth the conversation. So uh, again, I'm looking at Mark. Right now, so horticulture is one program, but within horticulture, we have many concentrations. Okay, with, that may warrant its own shop. Look at YouTube. Okay, uh, but if we incorporate animal science to some level, what space would they need? 
So I just want to make sure when we say shop, like horticulture, how many actual shop spaces do you need? I, I know we all, when we talk about shop for you, you two, we're also probably talking about the garage space, sort of dual purpose, okay? Uh, I mean, I would say minimum two, because uh, I think we need one that's going to be, needs to be really dedicated to greenhouse and flooring, really needs to be clean. Um, it can't be overhauling engines in that. Then the other one could be a combination of landscape, harbor, equipment. So a minimum of two shops to, to support a horticulture program. Yeah. Two spaces. Two spaces, yes. The the, the, the flory one could be smaller than the other one, because the other one we could use for multiple uses. But the large the horticulture one would have you'd have to be able to bring heavy equipment into it to work. So the greenhouse space we connect to the greenhouse connect to the classrooms. It doesn't necessarily need outside access that most do. But when we put a large equipment in, we need to drive something like a backup in. So that would, that would happen to each of the needs. Yeah, I think access. this program is unique, like they're talking about. So, um, Kevin, if you, if you looked at our other shop programs, you'd see that they're very much self contained, is the way the design is here. So, you'd see a garage bay that could be anywhere from, I don't know, 50 to 80 feet. Yeah. And off of that, you're going to have a classroom space, one or two, bathrooms, tool area, maybe in some of them they're going to have a second level mezzanine that has, you know, other storage. So they're, they're kind of in that self-contained. You go into that area and you got classrooms, bathrooms, locker rooms, and then the bays, depending on which they are. Yeah. Um, so, like, with this one, when you, when you think shop, this probably wouldn't be that 2,000 square feet might be broken up into three spaces of shop. Um, whereas if AgMac or Animal Science came in, Animal Science wouldn't necessarily need a shop space because the barns and the grounds are their shop, but they would need the classroom space and the locker room. If Ag Mechanics joined them, again, they would need that larger um, garage-style bay. With, so the, I think the question is, are the classrooms completely separate the way your drawing is, and then all the garages and bays and everything is down by shop program broken up? Um, or do we put that into that sort of self contained configuration for two times or two and a half times? Or, I think that's important as we think of the, the vision of where this goes. Um, I see the benefits of both. I also see downsides of both as you're trying to do programs, but uh, it does keep. You could have, you know, you're going to have clean areas and classroom areas that would end up being separate from the way they are now, which would be your your actual work stations and areas. Um, and if horticulture was at the end of the building, or where your drawing is, you can almost have that clean horticulture uh, space connected directly to the uh, greenhouses, while the the dirtier uh, equipment storage and and heavy machinery and, and uh, maintenance area. Uh, where they're sharpening blades and their chainsaws and working on stuff could be separated out. You know, so I think that that is as we look at cost and size, it's, I think that part of the vision has to be there because either we we're, we're you're building these self-contained compartmentalized, or we're building classrooms and then on out to shop base. Okay, I mean, some of the support back to like how much how much space we have, how much is segment that you want to do out there. Um, I haven't look, looked at it terribly closely yet to see you know, how much space is in between like the main loop road, you know, the rock, one that goes down to the rack building, and then the road that's kind of behind it. Um, and whether you want to maintain those or you want to reconfigure those, because we can make the building probably wider and it could accommodate the classroom shop you know, together configuration better. Than, that what the roads can do right now. So you know, I think it's I think it's a, a kind of a choice that you, know, you should probably we have to figure out. Yeah, which will help you as you actually design. Yeah, and I, I you know I'm not sure what um, when you say the square footage if, if we were kind of being pushed into a situation where we had to match the square footage. 
is that footprint, square footage, or is that building square footage? I mean, so you can do a lot with the basement space without a lot of cost. I mean, we think, you know, for parking equipment down there, then, you know, obviously we would need to put in proper, you know, fireproof and, you know, materials and all that. But, you know, it could be a, a pretty big space that we can, you know, create and help you, you know, have more space to you know, the field programs. <clears throat> I, I think there's opportunities for, you know, for using that end of the building as, you know, a place to drive equipment into have garage doors there at the lower level. And at the upper level, maybe it's a retaining wall, which have all the greenhouses off the back of the building. So, I some thoughts on that. I personally like that idea, honestly. Uh, you're saying more than the more traditional classroom space up on this upper uh, elevation. Shop and down back is the yeah. garage space, which for your particular program is your shop space for the most part. I think it makes a lot of sense, honestly. I'm open to ideas. As far as the footprint itself, there's, you know, we're looking at what was there. But when we're looking at the new building, I mean, we have land. Yeah. So that, that's not a problem. We're not landlocked at all. And uh, but these guys know what, what they need to do. We know what we have. We can work around. If we're going to push a wall or we're going to make a parking spot, we got it. We're not, we're not landlocked at all. So your open theory of, as they started off, we want the best that works with the educational system for our students and our teachers. So from where I'm sitting, it's I want to give it. And I want you to give us, okay, you could have, as Amy said, you could have this plan or you could have this plan. You know, if I can do this plan, that's what we want. Uh, we want to give them plenty of room to do this. We're growing the school. We're going to have more students. We're going to, but we have other buildings that Andy talked about that have needs also. So we can't go super crazy here. We're going to need funds for different projects. So, but give us your concept in regards to this is what I see, and I think I'm hearing what you're saying. Tim knows, they know. You got ears on and people that use the resources. We're the administrators to try to make it all happen, but we need, that's where you're sitting here, it needs to give us a master plan of a nice new building that's workable. Plus, this is going to be uh, students can look at this, future students, and say, I want to go there because they get that new building. You know, I'm thinking future here. So, uh, you know, I want to take advantage of all that now because, you know, in the next 25 years, this is going to have a major impact on what we're doing. Yeah, great. Yeah, I guess, you know, one of the one of the things um, I was thinking when we located the building where it was is, you know, accessibility and, you know, because that all these programs need to be, you know, fully accessible, whether they actually, you know, realistically need to be or not. Um, you know, especially that's uh, something that we have to deal with. So, you know, to try to avoid elevators, you know, which added expense to the building, you know, keeping the building where it is right now, puts it on the same level as all the other buildings. You know, we can build, you know, a, a lower level into it, but there's always going to be that access issue of going down the hill to get to the other part of the building if somebody needs to. Um, so that was, that was part of the reason. It, um, another thing is that, you know, we have certain buildings on the site already. Those aren't going to move, so we need to kind of build, if we're going to put the building kind of where it is right now, you know, kind of think about that as we kind of put the building back into that space. You know, I hear what you're saying, you, you know, you have a lot of land. I looked at the, I looked at the you know, the site that you have on the assessor's map, and there's quite a, a lot of open land around the, the campus. You know, so maybe it's maybe we build the building down the hill instead. Um, you know, that's a that's a consideration. But it also, you know, opens up other challenges when it comes to the accessible site. Yeah, I just want to be flexible. So that yeah. you know, you come back to us with this this is what you have, but this is what you could have. 
Yeah, I, I saw how much money they spent out at like one Where of the first the one money the summers of money. So it looks like a private school. Yeah, sure. That's dust. That would be nice. Cape High Tech was another big expansion of the Middle East. Would it be helpful maybe for you? We decide kind of what we're going to do for the fall. Like, are we going to keep part of the building that's not damaged so we can move forward with school, or are we going to tear it all down um, so you can decide where you would design it? Because if you're going to be building a new building around the park that's staying, I assume that would affect that would be more helpful. Yeah. Because um, then we decide where the building is Yeah, but I think I can get that front half of the building up front. Okay. The boiler rooms there, the off the electrical supplies there, the water would make me a little challenge, but I can make that front half work. Yeah. yeah and that's then the when they thing. say, hey, here's our plan, here's we're going out the bid, then you then you can tear it all down. Yeah. Have you have you worked out a plan for that with the building inspector? Because they assume that there has he, he told me what section to take down and there's there's a block wall that separates them. I can't imagine so you can't make the front. No, I think this one serves egress. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, Every, everything is there. Yeah. So, so that's probably something to point out to you. Yeah, definitely. You know, what what your plan has to be here on the site. And then, I think the second thing is, you know, what are the uses of the classrooms that you want to have, and what are the uses of the shops that you want to have. I think identifying those so we can specifically, you know, design around your uses is going to be. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, so understanding that, maybe trying to get that, those link systems assembled, you know, what you're looking for from technology. Um, you know, this is probably the the more recent way that things have gone is with the screen rest of the screen. Um, rather than projectors or anything like that. But they have, I don't know, what, what capabilities of that particular screen are. They often have the ability to write on the rear job straight to keep track of the screen. Right, Jeff? Yeah. yeah. We have two IT people on staff that can help you with this type of prep and all that. And where they have a country that's helpful. But they have a lot of knowledge about all the wiring and all the uh, new infrastructure for internet for everything. Yeah, and that, that was one of the other questions I think was down on the, the um, was utilities for this building. Um, we want to make sure that we have capacity for the utilities that you have on, on the site right now, or whether we need to, you know, bring in, like this new building will need to be sprinkled, I don't know if you're building the screen right now, but it's an educational facility, it's just a of fire, um, and, uh, and so if we don't have enough water capacity down at that building, we have to bring it in from the Yeah, the road. And then there's the, on the corner of the building. That, that's the corner of the eagle. That's where our sprinkler system goes in there. So they, does every building have to have a dedicated six inch line or can you tag off of that? Um, this rail building's pretty small, so it may be able to be smaller than six inches, like, or if not, 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 if Okay. And there's a um, water, uh, besides water service, you know, what kind of They'll turn all the terms by the size of the building because they're not, there's, there's two feet in that building, there's two separate ones. Okay. Yeah. And really, you know, they need to put the building for me to have that sense of higher draw. Um, Ideally, if it was in the budget to replace the greenhouse, 
get maybe a little bigger, fully up to date technology, heating systems, things like that, yes. But we definitely need a new heating system in that. If we keep it. Okay, on that whole piece, no, just, around the base, yeah. just need a Modi heater that's in the ceiling to get prepared for So new is a relative term. Yeah, we can say 75. <laughs> that's, a, that's a way to add. It's renovation on top of renovation on top of renovation. But that's right. It, you know, those buildings back there weren't there. So when you put the, the newer metal building back there, was there a site plan that was going for that? Yeah, there was a newer metal building. Maybe I'm just misreading what I see in the area. Uh, oh, oh, the MS part? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that wasn't there. So that's like the, like the um, electrical supply from that comes all around the e building and the, and the data line. And um, all comes to the side of the e building around. So it's a little project money. Right. We've got a record of that. It's all here. Because we, we, nothing's written down. All the renovations, there's nothing written down. Yeah, we'll have to have a better understanding that sort yep. of thing. Those are pretty straight. Other than those, the power lines and the data back there, there's, there's nothing back there. There's no gas back there. The water stops. The sewer line that's down at the wreck building is all pumped up here. So there's no wetlands back there. Is there? Over the hill. Water's the way it will plow it. I'm pretty sure it's far the way it will plow it. Sure. Now, wetlands, but I know the last meeting we talked to both of you about other things that you want to save, i.e., climbing trees. So, identifying what you want to so stay we mark them with flagging, the ones we'd like to keep at all possible. So, you can walk down there and the trees that have green tape on it, the trees to keep, the rest can go away. I'm hoping so, if that would help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if uh, you want to keep trees, definitely. You uh, just get rid of them. So, good enough. Okay, so I guess for next steps, you know, kind of refining the program, um, getting a better idea of what the classrooms and shots are. And, uh, you know, once we have that, but, you know, we'll have maybe one more meeting to kind of wrap up the program. And, well, right now <clears throat> you have that targeted for the fifteenth, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, you said that's a Friday, Kevin. I did. I think I made it the next Tuesday. So.
Well, may as well sacrifice today. What do you think, Mr. Yeah. Mike? Yeah. Yeah. The board um, has a commitment setting at 1230, so anytime before 1230 that day. Uh, we're talking Tuesday the 19th. That would work. Yeah. Can we talk to your mechanical? Is there not some way to really put like maybe hydrothermal? John. Smith College is about to start this massive project. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be geothermal. Geothermal. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it feels a better idea on the square footage if you have a square footage that you can assign to it. That would be helpful also. Um, if you look at go to look at other schools and see what they have for you know, these different shop spaces, that would be helpful. I'm kind of you know drawing from previous places that I've worked at, um, but everybody's program is the correct. I don't want to give the space you know, what you need. You know, you're talking about a, a shop that may have, you know, um, you know, repair of motorized you know, equipment or whatever, combined with you know, uh, other you know, activities. That sounds to me like you know it wants to be a bigger space. All right. To dovetail with your question, Andy, so how are you going to navigate this? Are you going to <coughs> manage our two chains and Tim? How's Tim going to man? How's this going to physically your? I think Tim, you can be one person. But if we, the administrative team, that work with the two instructors, if we can give you the information, Tim. You're the, the direct conduit, though. If that works. When you need that information from us, then you can do your work. So on the 19th, you have something there. How many days does it take you to take the information that we're about to give to you? Well, we're, we're just going to be creating an updated program based on that. So right. you know, it could be pretty shortly before the meeting. OK. okay. So we'll get that done. OK. So I, next Friday. Yeah, and as far as the, the, the overall square footage of the building, was yeah. there something that you were, um, you know, had in mind for the square footage, or you're just you know, kind of, we're kind of assembling information right now to decide what you're going to have? So if we could send through Tim to send you all that information by next Friday the 15th, that gives you Monday, really Monday. <laughs> Uh, the 18th. I think we'll have to meet probably in the morning on Tuesday the 19th. Okay. Does that make sense? You have some drawings or plans that you can share as well with more elevation you're yeah. asking about? Yes, some existing conditions information. So, we, so okay. we're going to have what our ideal classroom size is, square footage that we're, we're going to have in, in uh, locker room size that we're going to assemble. Okay. And usage, I think, Marty James, if you can, as the end user, what do you see yourself using that space for? Don't forget Mr. Kaling's comments about roll the dice for the, for the moon. Let's get our wish list. Let's start up here, negotiate down here if we have to. So does that mean we'll, we should throw in additional classroom spray on the science? Yeah. Okay. And it would also, you know, if you want large equipment repair bay, that would be a good place for it. That's what most of the equipment is. Right. Is there a brain storm? Or is it probably already have? Yeah. Okay. okay. You want to walk back to the back there? Yeah, that'd be great. What time? What time is your availability on Tuesday the 19th? Okay. Starting at 12.30. Okay. I mean, I guess it would be, you know, if there's, like, 
ideas from other facilities that you have, you know, that probably, uh, something that you like, those are helpful to help us understand what's here. 